today we're making scones. Perfect fluffy scones. Now, scones are pretty simple. You might think what's there to show, but believe it or not, there are some tips and tricks that go into making a perfect scone. I'm going to show you how. Start with your flour in the bowl, then add the caster sugar. Then add baking powder, followed by a pinch of fine sea salt. Then use a whisk to gently combine them. This will disperse the baking powder and mean we won't have to sieve them. Add your cold butter in small pieces and then use your fingertips to start rubbing the flour and butter together. You can also rub the mixture in your palm of your hands until it resembles breadcrumbs. Add your milk, or you could do a mix of half milk and buttermilk, and stir. And then keep stirring until everything is fully combined. You don't want any dry pieces left in the mix and don't worry about over mixing. You could even use an electric mixer with a beater attachment up to here. Then tip your dough out onto a lightly floured bench, sprinkle some flour on top because the dough will be sticky. We're going to knead it by hand. We need to feel some strength and the dough needs to be quite smooth. Don't worry about over mixing it. It isn't a bread dough, but we do need some development and the nice long rest before we bake is going to give us a perfectly fluffy scone. Now I'm going to make fruit scones as well. When you're making fruit scones, soak sultanas or raisins in your favorite tea the day before for extra juicy fruit. I'm going to cut the dough in half and then mix in some sultanas. So when you're kneading, it helps to use a little bit of flour, not too much. It will just help you get a really nice smooth surface on the top of the dough. So contrary to popular opinion, I think it's actually really important for a fluffy scone that you do knead it a little bit um, just so it's smooth on top. Reason being that if you don't, the scone will be quite crumbly. To get that really um, fluffy scone, you do need to knead it just a little. Let your dough rest for about 15 to 20 minutes. This will give us a nice round shape when we cut them. Sprinkle some flour on your bench. And then I like to sprinkle some extra flour on top of the dough. And we're going to flip our ball of dough so the smooth side is actually on the bench. Sprinkle some flour, then roll your dough down in both directions. This will keep your scone round and stop it from stretching into an oval. You want your dough to be between two and 2.5 centimeters thick. If it's too tall, your scones will topple out of shape in the oven. If you lightly dust some flour on top, it'll let you cut your scones cleanly without needing to dust your cutter. Use a decisive motion to cut your scone and then flip it over. This creates a nice sharp edge around the top for our golden egg wash. To make the egg yolk wash, whisk an egg yolk with a pinch of salt and sugar. This gives it a nice consistency and brush on top of the scone right up to the edges to get a nice golden circle all the way across. So we're going to give our scones one final rest of one hour. This is going to allow the dough to fully relax so that when we bake them, the scone will rise perfectly and evenly. Preheat your oven to 180 fan force to 190 conventional and bake them for 10 to 12 minutes until nice and golden on top. And we're done. Or are we? So we've made our perfect fluffy scones. There's just one thing left to finish them off and that is the combination of clotted cream and jam. I'm always reaching for a little scarlet from Tip Tree. It's packed full of little scarlet strawberries, which only they grow. And these are little strawberries bursting with flavor. And you can't go past Rhoda's Cornish clotted cream. There's just one question, which goes first? So obviously the correct answer is that jam goes first because jam is a spread and cream is a topping. Um, it's traditional, logical in the Cornish way. I don't want to start a war or commit an act of cultural vandalism, but I could see that there may be sensory or practical reasons why one might prefer it the other way around. So I'm going to show you both. Your perfect fluffy scone is going to split down the middle. Spread a teaspoonful of your favorite jam onto the scone and then we'll top with clotted cream. Now clotted cream is actually quite firm and will probably require two teaspoons to maneuver it onto the softer jam. The rich fattier cream will also coat the top of your mouth, masking some of the lighter flavors of your jam. Now the cream first approach could be a bit more practical because you spread the thicker cream onto the scone first, giving a creamy backing to the fruity flavor of your favorite jam on top. Now I don't think it matters either way because nothing beats the classic combination of jam and clotted cream, or should I say clotted cream and jam? 